Hi, welcome to Let's Talk Careers. I'm your host, Lisa, Lisa Bauman. Today, we're going to be talking with Nathan Lee, Project Manager for the University of Waterloo and part-time professor for the School of Business. In our conversation, Nathan shares his journey from ESL teacher to project manager, and he shares two key factors that drove his journey, curiosity and a willingness to take risks. I hope you enjoy. Welcome, Nathan. Thank you so much for coming today. I'm going to start by having you introduce yourself. Yep. So Nathan, Nathan Lee. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I am currently working in project management. Okay. Um, and I guess there's a lot we could dive into there. Yeah, definitely. Related to project management. What are you passionate about? Uh, I'm passionate about complex problems. Cool. So getting something that's maybe at the start. Okay. And then trying to figure out ways to plan it and build it and work with people to kind of get to the final product. Thus, the project management. Yes. Cool. So let's begin with your career journey. And I want to start sort of going way, way back, mm. as back as far as you were wanting to share. Um, but what would be your, you know, your first paid job, maybe as a young person, maybe part time or upon graduation? Yeah. So very first paid job was newspaper delivery boy. And uh, yeah, so just delivering papers and then collecting fees. That was an interesting part of it back in those days, door to door. Um, um, but uh, I spent a lot of time actually um, working as a camp counselor for a number of years in a summer camp. And um, I, I felt that that was kind of a good way to learn about working with people and groups and leading yeah. and that kind of thing. So yeah. How yeah. did you get into that opportunity? Uh, it's just family members okay. and they said, hey, you want to try coming to camp and and then it kind of grew out of there and counseling and eventually leading the camp and that kind of thing. So Okay. So yeah. then after your summers as a camp counselor, what did you do? Post secondary? Yeah, so I did uh an undergrad in political science. Okay. I actually didn't really know what I was getting into or why I was going in the direction I was, but at the time it felt like you know, it was uh something that I was somewhat interested in and so I just pursued it. Um, and then, uh, when I finished, I wasn't really sure where I was headed after okay. finishing university Okay. and, uh, ended up going overseas and teaching English in cool. Japan for a okay. few years. Yeah. Okay, cool. We just talked to a guest about that too. Oh, so how okay. did you, how did you find out about that opportunity and what was the deciding factor that made you want to go? Yeah, I found out that opportunity because my, uh, older sister was actually teaching overseas as well. Um, and at the time when I had finished, like I mentioned, I kind of finished my degree and then wasn't really sure what direction I was going to go. Um, and I had some interest in teaching, just having that experience back with summer camp and working with kids. And I thought, oh, maybe I could do public school teaching or something like that. So I decided to go overseas and, and, uh, pursue that ESL was a good, is a good way to kind of get into that. Yeah. So yeah. where did you end up in Japan? Um, I ended up actually over three years, uh, three separate cities. Okay. So north of Tokyo, okay. um, and then Osaka, uh, and then, and then a kind of a smaller city, uh, further north. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so you did it for about three years mm -hmm. and can I ask, do you remember what the pay was and <laughs> what year was that? Do you remember what year was that? Oh, so 2003. Okay. Yeah. Is when I, um, 2003 is when I left and I came back in 2006. Um, the pay was, I recall, I, I can't recall the exact amount, but it was helping me pay off my debt. Nice. So it was good enough. Nice. Good <laughs> at enough. At the time. Yeah. Good enough. Very good. So after you came back from Japan, where did you end up? Yeah. So after I came back, um, I was actually doing, um, a college, uh, online, uh, human resources certificate, um, when I was in Japan. And so when I landed, I was kind of back in Canada. I was looking for uh, human resources work specifically. Okay. Uh, and I ended up getting an internship um, through this company called Career Edge. Okay, cool. Yeah. I think I know them. Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting. I did that. I did so where, that. So wait, where, where was that? Was that here in Kitchener, Waterloo? No. Yeah. 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 Okay. It was here. It was uh, back in the day. I uh, did the internship at uh, Blackberry, which was actually called RIM at the time. Yep. Yeah. So how long were you there at RIM? Uh, so I was there for two different, uh, jobs. So about a year okay. working there. Yep. 
Cool. Mm -hmm. And then what? <laughs> and then, well, after that, um, I uh, was looking for another um, opportunity and I ended up um, starting to work at the region of Waterloo. Okay. Yeah. So and how so, did you, how did you get into that job? Yeah. So I did that actually, <laughs> how did I get into that? Um, <laughs> informational interviews awesome. actually was the way I got in that. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you do? Like, okay, walk me through that. What did you do? You just picked up the phone and. Yeah. I, so I was looking for, um, work still kind of in human resources at the time. And I, um, yeah, I was basically picking up the phone and doing cold calls and I was asking for 15, 20 minutes of someone's time, asking them about um, like the company, the organization, the role and showing curiosity and just, just kind of, I mean, there was two motivations there. One was, you know, to find out what was out there and what kind of roles there were. Uh, and the other was to kind of make myself known through networking. Right. Yeah. So what was the result? Did people say, yes, I'll talk to you right away? Or did you have any, any name? Like, no, it thank was, you. It, or? Um, it was mixed results. Yeah. I had to kind of figure out my approach. Okay. And um, when people found out that I wasn't just banging on their door, asking for a job, that I was actually curious and wanted to learn about what was going on in their organization. Um, they were happy to have those conversations. Um, and in particular for this um for this situation, um, I had a short 15 minute conversation with someone in HR. Um, and then they referred me to someone else in HR and I had another short 15 minute conversation and then they provided a two week contract. Cool. And then that two week contract ended up lasting about five years. Nice. So <laughs> Nice. I yeah. love that. Um, I love that you were willing to, um, take different approaches with people and that you were, you weren't willing to give up. Right. Mm, because, yeah. you know, when I'm talking with my students, I'm like, you have to, you know, you, you're going to get some no's, right? You have to try that different approach and see what it's going to take. Um, but you also have to be willing to say, who else should I be talking with? Who else should I be talking with? Like, do you have any advice for me? What, you know, and, and that's where the true magic happens, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I felt I honestly really had to build up to these conversations yes. and it was over a number of months and it, it was not practice. easy from the start. Yeah. yeah. Practice. Yeah. Practice. Practice. So you were at the region of Waterloo for five years. What was the role that you did there? Uh, I did various things. I was in HR for a while and then I moved to HR systems um, on a project that lasted uh, a number of years, much longer than when I was there. Um, and that kind of led me in the direction of IT, which wasn't really my initial plan, but that's kind of how I sort of directed that way. Okay. So what happens next then? Um, yeah. So I was in this um, kind of long-term project in IT and HR slash IT uh, and then felt, you know what, I, I feel like I really want to um, take more control of where I'm headed in my career. So I decided to go and uh, do a full-time um, MBA. And uh, so I ended up um, temporarily leaving that job. They actually, I actually retained the job, but then went for a year leave right. uh, and did the schooling. Yep. Yeah. Where did you do your MBA? Uh, Laurier. Nice. Yes. Yeah. And it was yeah. fortunate. Um, some programs aren't kind of a year, so right. it was really nice to kind of yeah. do that in a year. Yeah. So you did your MBA and then you went back to the region? Yeah, I did go back to the region for a short time. Um, and then, uh, and then from there decided to look for another job that was more IT, um, focused and, uh, and then applied to, uh, Grand River hospital. Okay. And so I'm, I'm curious, was it, was it something in the MBA that said you wanted to make that shift to more of the IT focus or what was it that perpetuated kind of that shift? Um, so I've always used education as kind of a way to push me forward. So when I was overseas in Japan, I thought, you know, when I'm coming home, what am I going to do? And HR was something that uh, my brother-in-law was in and I had some interest in teaching and training. And so I thought, how would I pursue that? Um, you know, and the same thing with the MBA it was, it was another kind of um, looking as a way to kind of open doors and, and move me forward. And it's just one piece of the puzzle, but uh, it, it was kind of a something that I felt if I did this, it's going to help me okay. move along. Yeah. But what drew you to, to shift into IT? Um, at the time, I didn't think uh, HR was the best fit 
for me. So just, it was just kind of working in the field for a number of years and then just saying, you know, looking at the options and thinking, well, you know what, I really like the IT aspect and the project aspect. Right. Um, and how can I get more of that? Okay. And then I thought, well, you know, maybe an MBA would help open doors for that. So right. I pursued that. Okay. So now you land at Grand River Hospital. Mm. What, what, it, what was your role? What was the, the area? That yeah. You so I was an applications analyst. Okay. Um, so really just supporting um, hospital systems, IT systems, um, doing projects for upgrades uh, to software. Um, yeah, supporting changes in software, processes, business analysis, that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 So how long did you do that for? I did that for a few years and then ended up um, getting a manager role in, in the same organization. Uh, and so managing the team that I was previously on uh, and then ended up doing that for two years. Cool. Yep. <laughs> I still feel like there's a, there's another jump yet. Yeah. There before is another we jump. get to here. Yeah. <laughs> Just it, one. It, yeah. It, 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 I've kind of worked in this two year time frame, like okay. a roughly two years and then two years and just keep kind of moving. Okay. Moving. Okay. That's interesting. Um, yeah. And so, and so when I finished that role, um, I ended up moving to the university of Waterloo, okay. which I am currently at. Right. And what's your, what's your role there? Uh, my role has changed. So my role right now is is kind of hard to describe because it's all new, um, and it's in uh, it's in IT governance, um, and that's um, it's a new role in a new in a new office. Um, but um, I am still uh, loosely tied to my previous role, so it's a secondment. Okay. Uh, so my previous, or how to explain it? My first role was doing something similar to Grand River Hospital. Uh, and then I moved into the project management office. Uh, so that's where I am currently. Uh, and I'm, yeah, I'm a project manager in the project management office. That's um, awesome. Yeah. So I'm curious, how did you find out about the opportunity at the University of Waterloo? Like, how did you get in? Was it networking? Informational interviews. Again. Same thing. Wow. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is the approach that I've used primarily to move. Um, and, and I, you know, if anyone asks me about it, I usually say, well, it's one way, right? You can send your resume out and hope that it sticks and you can have a friend of the family refer you and there's other ways, right? Um, yeah. With the University of Waterloo, I, I went on LinkedIn and I was looking for roles, um, not in management, but something similar to what I've been previously doing. And uh, I saw the job posting and, and, and then reached out to someone that was in management and IT and said, hey, can I have a 15 minute conversation? Let's talk about this role. And they said, well, I'm not the right person, but you can talk to the hiring manager. Uh, and so had a conversation with that person. Um, he was very careful to say, hey, this isn't an interview. This is nothing official, right? Um, but it was a way for him to realize that I wasn't just a name on a piece of paper. Um, and then after that, uh, I applied to the role officially, uh, and ended up getting an interview. So when you call those folks, what kinds of questions are you asking them? Yeah, I'm trying to keep it focused on being curious. So, um, what is it that the role entails? What's it like working on the team? Um, you know, what are some challenges you see coming up? Uh, and then try to share a little bit about myself and give a little bit of, you know, exposure yeah. to them about who I am. Yep. Um, so that maybe they will think about me. Yes. As <laughs> if, they look if, through the applicants. Yes. As yeah. they look through the applicants. Yeah. And, th and this approach also, you know, that I've used, I've gotten interviews in different roles as well. So it wasn't, it's not always, oh, I see a role and apply to it. It might be, oh, I think that place is interesting. I'll find somebody to speak to. And then all of a sudden a material, like something comes up, right? right. And materializes. Right. So. right. And yeah, yeah, that's exactly how I describe it to, to my students is focus in on the things that you are curious about, right? Mm. And find, try to find what is the need, right? What is the need that this, this, this position is there to fill? Yeah. And then start to, you know, give little hints about the things that you can do to support them achieving that particular mm -hmm. goal. So, so I'm, I'm kind of curious about you know, your comment about this every two years thing, where mm. does that sort of come from? Restlessness. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just being in a role and, and if just, this is just me, but yep. if I feel that, um, and this is probably why I'm in project management, but if I feel that it's becoming the same thing and I've kind of got a good grasp of it and it's not new, um, then I think, okay, you know, is there something else? Right. 
And it's also about keeping fresh and just yeah. renewing myself and learning and continuing on. So, so that, that is quite interesting. So then how did you end up at Con teaching at Conestoga? Cause you're teaching part time now. Yeah, yeah. So teaching, as I kind of mentioned, like earlier on, like, I mean, I did ESL and teaching was something that I really enjoyed <clears throat> and, it, and, you know, back to the summer counselor kind of like facilitation and working with people and, um, it, it just felt like it was something that was a really good fit for me and I enjoyed and I got a lot of energy out of doing it. So um, I saw a posting and thought, you know, this is a good fit. It's project management. It's what I do. Um, and so applied to that and yeah. Landed. Landed, landed the it, position. Yes. Landed the position. Mm -hmm. What would you say that you're sort of most um, proud of or maybe some of the more challenging ele elements that you've had to tackle? Yeah, yeah. I would say... Um, there's been some large projects. And when I say large projects, ones that last more than six months and are, you know, reaching all kind of aspects of the organization. So I've been in situations where um, I could see that the project was not going well um, as a project member team, like a member of the team. Uh, and then um, I th think of one specific instance where I started to, you know, alert management to say, Hey, I don't think things are going well. And, and I was just a regular team member. And so, you know, I didn't have any kind of, um, influence or that kind of thing in, in the, in the project. Um, but being able to communicate and say, um, you know, I think we need to course correct or do something different. Um, yeah, I'm not really explaining it well, but in that particular situation, um, uh, there was some interesting outcomes from that. Um, and kind of recognition that um, um, I was contributing in a meaningful way. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. And it, and I'm assuming the project co course corrected. And yeah, that was a very some... interesting project. And I can't mention where it was. That's okay. That's <laughs> that okay. project crashed and burned. Oh dear. <laughs> and uh, if you want to talk about pivotal moments, yes. um, that was actually a very um, in, insightful experience. I've never been on a project that crashed so. Um, poorly. Um, but it, it was a really um, understanding why that happened. And then kind of saying, as I went through my career, kind of reflecting back on it and, and really picking up all those pieces that, you know, what aspects of that didn't work and why. Right. Um, and he kind of a years long uh, thought on that. Yeah. Um, what did you come up with in terms of like, what did you learn about yourself and about kind of the way that things are being approached? Or yeah. So, so not to do. <laughs> yeah. Change management, project management, they get um, yeah. said in the same sentence sometimes. Sure. So in this particular case, change management was uh, really poorly done or maybe not well understood. Um, and so not underestimating the people aspect and the communication aspect um, and making communication, planning communication first, uh, and then kind of taking those change management ideas and principles and trying to understand them and apply them. Yeah. Um, so I think it really ups the success. For sure. Uh, yeah. So maybe just go a little bit more specific for people who may not know like what these terms mean. Like what does it mean, you know, in terms of change management? What does yeah. it mean in terms of maybe even communication in a project? Sure. Like one specific uh, model that's used is called ADCAR. So awareness, desire, knowledge, ability, and reinforcement. And so you can take something like that concept and you can apply it to a project from the start to the beginning. So when you start the project, you know, what awareness do people have and desire? Uh, and then think about activities to kind of make that uh, awareness and desire increase. And then as the project continues on, uh, increasing knowledge so that people have the tools to be able to do what they need to do. Uh, and then working on the ability, which is kind of a, a more um, hands-on and maybe using a software system. Uh, and then reinforcing it, you know, with training or ongoing messaging. So you can really kind of take that conceptual piece and right. just practically apply it in a yeah. project and yeah. it throughout the, the project cycle perhaps. Yes. Yeah. 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 So in your current position, um, how would you describe your typical day? Yeah. How would I describe my typical day? Yeah. So, um, my day is a, a combination of different meetings related to different projects. So as a project manager, I have more than one project, okay. typically four or five. And so I'll be meeting with uh, different project teams and either, you know, getting status updates yeah. or working through particular issues. 
or communicating to senior management about what the status of a project is. Um, sometimes it's uh, doing training. Sometimes it's demoing software. Sometimes it's um, working with procurement to figure out how to select new software. Uh, so it is very, there, there's a ton of variety. I think that's the big piece that I enjoy most. Wow. Uh, it's always something different. Yeah. So how many hours of meetings would you say that you have a day? Uh, when it's really kind of at a peak time, um, you know, probably about 50% of the day's meetings. Uh, and then the other, you know, a lot of the other time is built in with planning. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So clearly if somebody wants to get into this role, they need to be prepared to be the type of person to spend a lot of time meeting, discussing, right? Yes. Um, a lot whereas, of communication. Yeah. Communicating, right? Working whereas, with people. Yeah. Working yeah. through conflicts. Yeah. I can see that you, you, you know, you need to balance, or I can su surmise, you probably need to balance a lot of maybe competing interests or different departments across, you know, the, the, or different groups of people across various departments. How do you, how do you manage all that? <laughs> it, 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 everyone has a method yeah. and their own method of madness, maybe. Um, okay. So yeah, being able to have, um, being able to use particular tools, you know, uh, for example, like there's a software called Jira yeah. where you can track um, project work. Uh, MS project for scheduling. Um, you know, you can use um, basically your calendar and, and put lots of reminders in particular things. Um, you know, project management is fortunate um, being in that kind of discipline in the sense that there's a lot of templates and tools to apply so that you can really organize yourself uh, and kind of um, get a big picture and also get a detailed level. Uh, and so I like to really make use of those tools. Yeah. 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 What, what would you say would be the thing that makes you want to do that? <laughs> That's a curiosity because it sounds like a lot of variables. There are a lot of variables. A lot yes. of variables. Yeah. Yeah. So what would, like, what, do you think there's something like maybe from sort of the way you're growing up, something in your personality, something in your childhood that's like, I want to organize stuff. That's a deep question. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Hmm. You know, you know what? A little bit of anxiety okay. in a project manager helps. Okay, good. <laughs> because uh, you know, you can see deadlines looming. Yes. You can see expectations being set. Yep. And you say, "How can I plan and get ahead of this?" And there's a constant game of getting ahead of it. Uh, and I think that's what drives kind of those day to day mm -hmm. um, pieces of work. Yeah. yeah. So, what would be one of your favorite skills? Favorite skills. Yeah. Hmm. What's your favorite skill? Um, uh, organizing, nice. <laughs> uh, really like, um, planning things out. Yeah. And, and just, so in the project management realm, taking all of those tools that we have as project managers, um, for example, project charter, project plans, um, risk management plans, taking the tools and then applying them and using them to plan and kind of think ahead. I think that's one of those skills. So, yeah. So maybe even like forecasting how something might go. I don't know if forecasting is the right word though. Foreshadowing maybe? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It, there's a lot of ant anticipating. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anticipating. Yeah. Um, and as you, you know, every plan you make is, is only as good as what you know. Right. And so the idea is just to kind of try to keep thinking ahead. Right. Um, as long as you're one step ahead of, of yeah, where things are going. Where it's going. Yeah. Cool. So what is a skill that you're using now that you didn't think you were going to be developing maybe when you were, Headed to, to Japan to teach. Yes. Yeah. Um, practically speaking, communication through email. So wow. just, just the sheer amount of, and not just through email, but whatever, um, you know, Microsoft Teams or any kind of medium where you're writing and communicating, uh, it plays such a major part of my day. Uh, and they'd be able, the ability to just communicate through that um, quickly, but also tone Yes. And, and concisely and, and that kind of thing, I think yeah. is a really important skill. And I never thought never. that I would need that yeah. to the extent that I do. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that crazy? I think to some degree, that's probably a representation of how things change. Because mm -hmm. I think you said you went to Japan in what year did you 2003? say? 2003. Yeah. 2003. Yeah. I was going to say 2003 to now we're almost like 20, well, we're 20 years later, right? Mm -hmm. So technology changed and yes. obviously skill development needed to change. 
Um, what what would be some of the skills? Like if somebody were to say, okay, I'm going to go into the project management field. Mm. And I think, you know, you've kind of touched on a project management might fit into, you know, human resources or IT or all of these different areas. If you were to get into project management, what do you tell students around kind of getting ready to get into that field? Or- yeah. Um, it, it, I mean, so project management really um, differs depending on industry and, and the type of work that you're doing. I've always been in software, so software implementation. Okay. So the skill sets there would be very different from construction, you know, or the, that kind of thing. So, so speaking to software, I mean, understanding uh, technically speaking software, right. Uh, from even from a, just a conceptual level, um, databases, how software works, um, uh, having a grasp of that so that when you start to get into, Hey, we're going to start, um, configuring a system or, um, changing some of the integrations, right? So you have a, you have a sense of what's going on, uh, and then you can contribute to those conversations. Um, I think, uh, being very detail oriented is super important. Um, I can't imagine how many team minute meetings I've recorded and, you know, just making sure that we know what decisions came out of the meetings and where we're headed next and what the next steps are. Um, so attention to detail, I think is a big part of it. Um, communication in general, being able to communicate both, you know, um, verbally and written written yeah (laughs) in different mediums yes on teams on email in person in a meeting yeah all that kind of stuff so as you were talking about taking minutes Mm. i was like well you could just have ai do that right you could (laughs) so so my question is is how do you think ai is going to impact the way that the field is going to be going that's a really good question um I noticed this, uh, so recently, so for example, um, project charters, those are a very common thing to create, um, when you're doing projects, um, you can start to think about project charters as repeatable, right. With certain elements. So you could just say, well, you know what? I don't really need to sit down and craft a project charter. I can just say, here are the elements that I need to input and then spit out this project charter for me. Yeah, so th- there's there's probably ways that we're going to leverage to make things faster. Um, I think from just even back to that very simple example of taking minutes, when you take the action of actually writing down what's being said and paying attention to that is a process in itself, which leads you to do critically think, okay, what do we have to do next? So even inserting AI into something like that, yes, it could take the minutes and we could refer to it, um, but the process of actually having to pay attention and write it down you know, leads to further action. So, so yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see how that permeates into okay. project management in general. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I actually, I heard uh, a speaker say <laughs> that in 2040, that's when things are going to converge mm-hmm. and AI will start taking over everything. And I was like, okay, well then what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can, I can see it um, being disruptive. Yes. But, but um, even now, I mean, it's, it's been, you know, I, I might use chat GPT as an example to look something up quickly so that I don't have to Google it and look through several sources. Right. So there are, there are ways that it is kind of evolving into the everyday work. When you were a hiring manager and you were hiring people and you had people on the team. Yeah. So what were some of the things that you were looking for when hiring folks? You're on the other side of the table there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fit is important. Okay. Um, fit into the organization. So when you, and, and it's kind of hard to put your finger Let's on that say, as what well. What is that? Right? <laughs> what is so, that? So, <laughs> I mean, when you think about the people that you work with every day and you think of some of the personalities, maybe some of the challenges, maybe some of the specific work, and then you visualize that person in front of those people in maybe a contentious meeting yep. or in a conflict. Difficult situation. You say, yep. would this person fit? So what do you think is the, is the way that a, a job seeker can show that they're in that, they, that they can fit into that? What would be some of the things that you might look for? Yeah. So, so, you know, fit, fit is one thing, but, yeah. but really the, I, I think, so this is for me personally, the, the primary thing we're looking for is this, this kind of um, willingness and eagerness mm-hmm. to, to um, contribute. Right. So um, you know, any role that I've been in, 
Um, I've always tried to look and say, how can I contribute? So even as a project manager, a project manager may not get into testing software, but if I see that the team is running out of time, you know, I roll up my sleeves and say, how can I jump in to help? So there's just someone that's willing to, you know, jump in and, and be involved and, and contribute. Um, and I think you can find that when you do an interview, you can, you know, job interview specifically, you can get that sense, you know, um, their um, willingness to contribute. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's interesting. How would you describe the stage of career that you are in now? Hmm. How would I describe the stage of career? Um, I feel like my career has always been in flux. Okay. So I'm always, um, so this is one of the disadvantages of moving positions frequently okay. is, um, you always feel like you're starting, you're trying to get a sense of where you are and, and realign yourself. Uh, especially when you get, you know, someone that, um, a new manager, right. right? You have to understand what their expectations right. are, uh, or you're working with new people, you know? Um, so yeah, things are changing. Um, yeah, I call that social capital, right? Mm, like yes, that yes, ability to, to kind of leverage that, hey, I'm a person who is capable of doing things, right? So you have to establish that mm. sort of like over and over again, yes, right? You have to yes. reestablish your 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 social capital over and over again. So so you describe it as a sense of flux. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um having things constantly change is, is a pro and a con. Yeah. Um, how do you I was gonna say, how do you navigate that flux then? That ability? Uh, Having the ability to adapt. And so when I think about that, I think about learning. So as I'd mentioned, I'm in a new role um, and it's only been six weeks or so in that new role. And, you know, in this new role, I've bought some books. I'm starting to read. I'm actually reaching out and doing informational interviews with other people that do the role. Right. So just, just putting on the learning mindset um, and just realizing there's probably a lot you don't know and, yeah. and you're going to have to go out and really look for it. What would be some of the factors that you would consider when making a job change? What are some of the, what are some of those deciding kind of career decision-making factors that impact the choices so that, that you make? That's a very interesting question because um, in the past, the reasons that I made the change were due to something that was not exactly what I liked or was comfortable with, right? So it might be some factor of the job, which I don't enjoy anymore. Yeah. Um, who you report to, your manager is a big part of that equation. Uh, so different aspects where it's just kind of like, you know what, I think now's the time to make a change. Um, so, so, sorry, would you characterize that as being values, right? In terms of like, you know, the way that that relate, like the value um, of, you know, having a good relationship, you know, maybe was a factor in, okay, you know what, this isn't quite what I'm looking for. So I'm going to make that change. Would you sort of say it that way? Yeah. Or? Values. Yeah. I the mean, way, like, I mean, that's an important part. Like, I mean, yeah. I'm trying to extend that thinking about, um, you know, that term of work-life balance, yeah. right? Like if I'm in a role where I'm expected to do overtime, that's fine. But if it's, you know, never ending, you know, you start to feel the strain and then you say, yeah, this isn't part of my values. Right. So yeah, yeah, that, that is an important part of it. Absolutely. Um, I, I think for me then, you know, that it's just about the, um, having something fresh and keeping, okay. keeping going. Yep. Being more curious. Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, person early on in my career mentioned this idea of, um, a rolling stone gathers no moss. And I've always thought of that visual of, you know, yeah. th as you keep moving, you kind of keep fresh and you keep learning and that kind of yeah. thing. That's, that's interesting. So I'm going to go back to the stage. So you were saying that you're, you sort of feel like your career is in flux. So then I would say, given that stage, how do you think employers could support your career and your career future? Um, I think having um, opportunity is always important. So you know, anytime there's something outside of the normal work, um, what do you expect to be doing at work? And you see maybe a new project or a new task or a new committee to be on or a new group to be volunteer for, um, having opportunities, I think is, is a big part of it. Yeah. What advice might you have for students thinking about getting into this career? Yeah. Um, 
So again, it depends on the kind of project management you want to do. Right. Um, I think trying to learn as much as possible in whatever circumstance you're in um, will contribute to the kind of the building block to the next thing. So um, like I, I mentioned, kind of that willingness to um, contribute. Uh, if you're finding ways to go above and beyond, uh, that continues to build out to better things and more opportunity. Yeah. 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 What would you say is next for you? And what do you think you would, things would look like as you kind of come towards the end of your career? Yeah. What would be next? It's really hard to say, you know, so, um, I've, I've had this mindset that there's two things that majorly happen in your career. One is you continue on day to day. Don't really consider what will happen next and something just happens to you. And sometimes that's beautiful. Some really great things happen just out of the blue. Uh, and the other is to say, you know what, I'm going to, um, try to figure something out and, and push forward. Uh, so for example, when I was back in Japan, you know, I was like, oh, I want human resources as my future, you know, going to that, um, getting education and then pushing forward. So really two, two options. One is to sit there and have things happen or to make things happen. Right. Yeah. Um, and I have, I've been fortunate to have good experiences in both sides. Yeah. 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 What about your future though? What do you sort of see yourself doing? I would even say maybe the next 10 years. Yeah. Or is I, the stone going to roll? <laughs> it's, it's hard to know. It's yeah. hard to know. Um, given my recent change to a new role, mm -hmm. there's so much to learn. Yeah. I could be in this particular role for the rest of my career, honestly. Okay. Um, and that's a good thing. And um, I've never really, uh, I mean, in the role that I'm in now, I could see myself being, you know, for the rest of my career. So either as a project manager or in this new particular role. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess, um, it's good to reevaluate every couple of years. Yeah. If, if somebody was watching this podcast mm. and you want to send them a message about anything in terms of the things you've learned in your career, um, or even going into this field of project management, what, what yeah. wisdom would you want to impart? Um, maybe two things, but very broadly speaking. <clears throat> so taking risks, it's like not being afraid to maybe move positions and move jobs if things are not going the way that you want them to go or not how you envision them. Uh, and then being a constant learner um, and really not being afraid to um, take on new responsibilities, yeah. even if you don't really know what you're doing, what you're doing. <laughs> I know that feeling. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. That, that would be my thought. And, and I mean, in mixing in with that, it's just a general sense of curiosity. Yeah. Um, yeah always bringing that to the table for sure. is good. I, that's a, I think that's kind of the theme, right? For mm -hmm. you is that curiosity has driven you to try out these different things. Yeah. Cool. Thank you very much. Thanks. Wow. What a great conversation. Thank you for listening to this episode of Let's Talk Careers. If you like this episode and want to hear more, follow us on Spotify and subscribe on YouTube. See you in the next one.